Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today because I'm going to be unboxing and creating with the October Hedgehog Hollow box. If you are unfamiliar with the Hedgehog Hollow subscription box, I will link it in the description. Basically, it is a monthly subscription box, but I do believe that you can buy just one month at a time if you prefer that way. And it's packed with goodies, usually with a collaborating company and exclusive stamps. So let's go ahead and dig in and see what we get in this month's box. Upon opening, you see this really vibrant, beautiful orange tissue paper that just makes you think of fall and October. And then once you open it, you see it really is just packed. And she always includes some goodies, some candy. And you get this postcard here that's very festive. And it will show you where you can get your discounts for this month over there on the right. And it'll just give you a little blurb about the box and everything on the left. This month's collaboration is with the Ink Road Stamps, and the owner, Lara, has also added a little note here, and the back says, I am so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers, so I'll definitely be keeping that, and then you can just see all of the goodies that you get here, and then you get a little breakdown of everything in the box, so I'll keep that here for reference. These three Tonic Nouveau drops are Glow in the Dark Sour Apple, Simply White, and Ebony Black. And this here is really fun Nouveau Shimmer, Shimmer Powder Sorry, in Storm Cloud, and I have yet to use Shimmer Powder, so I'm really excited to get into that. These little spiders here are super cute Doodlebug Spideys Braddies and some Doodlebug Gingham Ribbon. And I've got a little funny story about meeting Alexandra, who is the owner of Hedgehog Hollow uh, at the In the Making Festival a few weeks ago that has to do specifically with this ribbon. So go ahead into the description to see the link to my blog for that funny story. And as I said, the collaborative company this month is Ink Road Stamps. Lara is the owner and I am on her design team for the Ink Road. She just creates the cutest stamps. They're very pop culture-y, very modern and current, and I am in love with them. So I know that it will be fun for everybody to create with those or her designs this month. Then we've got 12 pre-printed watercolor cardstock panels. And these are all cut pre-cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's really great to practice with these or just watercolor and then slap it on an A2 sized card base and send it out to a friend. They're also on Canson watercolor paper. So the quality is great. Here we have a piece of burnt orange cardstock. It's a bit textured. I don't know if you can see it there on the or through the camera, um, but they have that burnt orange color and then the brown color, which is great for the box. You also have an envelope to send your creation. And then you have this piece of green dotted acetate, which I think lends itself really well to the whole theme of the box. Then you've got all of these sheets of four and a quarter by 11 inch um, cardstock. It feels maybe like 80 pound to me. Uh, it's not 110 pound, but it's easily cut in half to make a card front panel. For my project today, I am going to be creating a card. Surprise, surprise. And I'm going to be using the October's set that's included in the box by Ink Road Stamps. This set has a very fall feel rather than a specific Halloween vibe, and I really liked that. So I'm going to be creating a fall card today. There's really great sentiments and images in this stamp set that lend itself really well to the season. So I'm just pulling a lot of stamps off and seeing what I'd like to do with the card. I finally come up with a design in my head that I like the books, the stacked books, and then I want the coffee cup resting on top of the books, almost to look like a study session or something. And I am going to do this by first stamping the coffee cup in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This ink is alcohol marker safe, meaning that the alcohol in Copic markers or any other alcohol marker won't make the ink smudge when you're coloring it in. So first I'm going to stamp this, like I said, right where I think that I'd like it on my card front. And I want to make sure that I center it. I want this to sort of be in the top center of the card front. And then after I stamp that, I'm going to stamp it again onto this piece of full sticky back post-it note. I'm going to be using this as my mask and this masking technique can be a little challenging to explain 
but it's a really simple theory, a very simple technique. Basically what you do is just stamp it onto something like this full sticky back post-it note and cut it as close to the lines as possible. You're then going to place that over your image and then stamp whatever you want behind that image on top of it. So as you can see, I've masked that off and I'm now going to stamp the books a little bit into the, the image of the cup. So I want the cup to look as if it is resting on the books. So I'm just going to make sure that a little bit of that line from that book goes up into that image. Normally without that masking, the line would go right through the cup and it would just look stamped over it. But because we have that masking, once I pull it off, any lines that are going through that now appear as if they are behind it. So now you really get the look of the cup being on top of the stack of books. I'm going to use the sentiment, I am so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. I just think that this sentiment is really cute and it's very fallish. I use my Misty to line it up as best as I can, but I do fail a bit. It is a bit crooked, but that's okay. This is handmade, not Hallmark. I'm going to use Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp this just to make sure I get a really nice crisp uh, impression. And then when I'm done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and get into my coloring. I have sped this up, so I am going to put all of the colors or the Copic colors that I use in the description if you are interested in that. I have sped up the coloring, but it's still quite a bit, so I'm going to put on a little bit of music. And if you're not interested in watching me color, you can go ahead and just fast forward to the 8 minute and 20 second mark. I'm just finishing up here. If you couldn't tell because it was sped up, I like to use generally three colors when I'm shading in just to have a shadow shade, a highlight shade, and then a mid shade or mid tone to kind of blend it all together. Um, but sometimes for very small spaces, I just use two shades. I'm going to go ahead now and create a shadow for this uh, image just to make sure that it's grounded. I don't want it to look like it's just floating in midair. So I'm going to use W1, W3, and W5 for this. I occasionally use W7, which is a very dark color that I actually usually use as black, only because black tends to get very lost when you're Copic coloring in an image. But I use W1 just to create the broadest shadow. I then use W3, which is slightly darker to create a bit of a more closed in shadow. And then I use W5 finally just directly underneath just to make it as the darkest shadow directly beneath the image. If you ever really look at a shadow of something, you'll notice that it fans out or it blends out a bit. It doesn't tend to just be one block of dark color beneath um, an image or an object, it kind of fans out into a lighter shadow as it gets farther away from that object, depending on the light source anyway. Not something that I would have paid attention to until I started drawing shadows with Copic markers. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use that orange textured piece of cardstock as my matted background to my card front. So the matted background is cut to four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and the card front itself is cut to four by five and a quarter. So this will leave just a slight bit peeking through for when I attach it to my card base, which is an A2 size, five, I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half. To embellish the card a bit, I went ahead and used the Nouveau drops in ebony that were included in the box just to bring in some black from those black lines where I stamped and from the sentiment. And I absolutely love the way this came out. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Hedgehog Hollow and how I created this card. Please consider checking out my blog post that goes along with this video. The link is in the description. I share a little bit about when I met Alexandra, the owner of Hedgehog Hollow, and go into detail a little bit more about the products used in today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.